Hello everyone, I'm Ted. This is Cosplay Gourmet. On um, this week we're going to be heading into the land of Westeros, specifically the north, where I'm going to be making a venison barley stew, as well as lemon cakes and also mulling some wine. So, brace yourself, because winter is coming. venison barley soup. So for this we're going to need venison, or in this case beef, about a pound, two pounds, two cups chopped celery, two cups chopped carrots, two cups chopped onions, uh, about two cups or so of sliced mushrooms. You're going to need two to three quarts of cold water, uh, about a tablespoon of garlic, a little bit of olive oil to coat the pan for your sautéing, a packet of some sort of onion soup mix, uh, about a tablespoon of parsley, a cup of barley, and a tablespoon of pepper, and a tablespoon and a half of salt. Alright, so we're going to start by making the barley. It's going to be two and a half cups of water, which I'm very accurately measuring here. Actually, that was pretty good. Uh, and a cup of the barley. Throw that in here. And we're just going to put this on the stove here on high and let this go till it comes to a boil and we'll worry about that when we get to it. In the meantime, we're going to move on over to the vegetables. So now we're going to move on to sauteing some of our vegetables. So we've got, we don't want a big skillet because you're going to put all of these vegetables in it. To start, we're just going to kind of coat the inside of the pan here with some olive oil. We're going to do the garlic. the mushrooms and the onions. Garlic, mushrooms, and the onions. So we're just gonna saute these in around here and then we're gonna add the other vegetables. So we're gonna continue sauteing these onions, mushroom, garlic mixture until the onions turn clear and then we're going to add in the celery and the carrots. Our onions here are starting to clear out. So while this is happening, you can see our barley starting to boil back there. We're going to add in our carrots. And our celery. We're going to continue to stir this for a little bit. In just a second, we're going to start browning the meat in this other big pot. Our barley has started to boil, so now we're actually going to turn down that heat down to a simmer and we are going to cover that. So, we still got this happening in the background. We're going to take this big pot here, turn it on, and we are going to put oil in the bottom of the pot here, and then we're going to brown all of our meat first. So, take again, this is beef. I don't have any venison right now. If you have venison, this will work. Uh, we're just going to put this. Oops. Paper over there. Over here. There we go. So we'll just brown this in the meantime. That's about it. We finished sauteing all of our vegetables, and if I keep this on the heat, they're probably going to start to burn. So we're going to take these off, put them on the back burner, and focus more on the meat. So here we are, just browning the meat in the bottom of the pot. So now we finished browning all of the meat, so we're going to add our water in for our soup. So this is two or three quarts. And so this is about a quart and a half. I'm just going to fill this up one more time. Take this and we're going to simmer this for about 40 minutes and once it's simmered for that long then we're going to add in all our vegetables. But we do have the 
salt, pepper, and the parsley that we took out earlier. So we're going to throw in a tablespoon of parsley. And we're supposed to add about a teaspoon or so of pepper. And about a teaspoon and a half of salt. And I uh, almost forgot about our onion soup mix. Add that in here as well. So we're going to be making the mulled wine while our stew and our barley is still cooking down. So for this, you need a couple different ingredients, but one of the things you need is it's... I'm not exactly sure how to pronounce it, I think it's French. But essentially it translates to sweet powder, and this is a medieval cooking spice mixture that they commonly use when making any kind of sweet treats, so this is going to go into that. So for that, we're going to use a half a cup of sugar. Got that. We're going to use... Oops, this is the wrong thing. Here we go. Cinnamon. We're going to use uh, two and a quarter teaspoons. Uh, oops, teaspoons. That would have been bad. Of uh, nutmeg. Two. A little bit for a quarter there. A half a teaspoon. Uh, I'm sorry. That was of cinnamon, not nutmeg. Uh, a pinch of nutmeg. A half a teaspoon of ginger. And this is kind of hard to come by, but uh, a half a teaspoon of grains of paradise. Which turns out, I did not know prior to this, something you just pre buy in the store. So, half a teaspoon. And then all we're gonna do is just kind of mix this mixture up. So we've essentially just stirred this all up. So you can see it has a nice kind of, smells pretty cinnamony, but we're gonna take some of this. We're actually gonna have leftover, so you can use this for any kind of baking needs that you have, but we're gonna use a little bit of this in the wine. All right, so for mulling the wine, obviously you're gonna need some wine to start with. Um, because you're adding spice mixtures in this, I would not recommend a very expensive wine. So a cheap red wine, using a Cabernet here. I'm just going to pour this into whatever pan you're going to be making this in. Then you're going to put this on a low heat to simmer and then we'll start adding in the mixture. So my barley now has fully absorbed the water so we're going to take this, turn it off and take it off the heat to be added into our soup mixture after it finishes simmering. Alright, our wine has started to simmer here, so now we're going to add in a tablespoon and a half of our sweet powder mixture here. And then, this is pretty much up to you, whatever you like to add. You don't even have to do this, but I'm going to add in uh, some slivered almonds and then some cranberries and some raisins. So I'm going to add in a little bit of what we've got here is some California raisins. Careful when you do this, you don't have to fill it all over the place. And some craisins. And then you're just going to let this simmer for another 20 minutes or so before you take it off the heat. So now it's been about 40 minutes and our soup water has been boiling, so we are going to stir in our vegetables from before. Be careful because it's still splattering, it is hot. stir in the barley. So 
now we're going to let put the lid back on this again and let this simmer for about another 40 minutes. So our mold line has simmered here for about 20 minutes. You can actually see how it's reduced down by the line that's inside the pan there. And what we're going to do is, because we're not going to have this for a little while, we're going to take this off the heat, but you're going to want to serve this hot, but when you go to put it into the glass, you're going to just want to ladle off the top because the grain mixture that we put in and the spice mixture and all the raisins and the almonds and everything are going to settle out on the bottom, so you don't want to disturb that because you don't want gritty wine. So we're going to move this off the heat, and while our soup continues to cook, we're going to move on to lemon cakes. So now we're going to move on to the lemon cakes while the soup continues to cook down. We've got two and a half cups of flour, two cups of granulated sugar, two egg yolks, one whole egg, a uh, six tablespoons of butter, zest from about two, one large lemon, and some lemon juice. This stuff shouldn't even be here, but that's fine. And then we've got a little bit of milk and some confectionery sugar, about a half a teaspoon, or one and a half teaspoons of milk and a third of a cup of confectionery sugar, but that is for the icing on the top of the cakes. So our soup is still simmering here. It's been about an additional 40 minutes, but things look good. It's reduced down a little bit. So we're going to take this off the heat and let this sit while we make the lemon cakes. But to do that, we are going to preheat the oven to 350 degrees. So we have our sugar and our flour mixed in here and our butter as well. So now, while that continues to stir, we're going to add in pretty much everything else. So we're going to take our two egg yolks, those in, our zest and the lemon juice, and our whole egg. We're going to let that stir for a couple of minutes here, and then we'll get back in a second. Our dough is mixed up. It's where we want it now. It's not sticky, so we're just going to take this and put it in one inch little balls on our cookie sheet, and then we're going to mix that up. So we could do it by hand. I've got this ice cream scoop here. So put these in and just, you know, put them down on the cookie sheet. You want to give them enough room so that when they cook, they'll have an area to expand. So we've got everything out here on a pan, and we're going to put our lemon cakes in the oven. That's preheated to 350 for 15 minutes. Right now that we have our lemon cakes in the oven, we're just going to take our confectionery sugar and a little bit of milk, and we're going to mix these together. This is going to be the frosting for the top of our lemon cakes. So just going to stir these up till they get a smooth consistency, and that's it. So this is our icing that we're going to put on the top of lemon cakes. Alright, so our lemon cakes are done. It's been about 15 minutes. Put those on there to dry, or cool rather. And we're just going to take some of that icing that we made, a little bit with a spoon, and then just drizzle a little bit on the top. So that's it for this episode of Cosplay Gourmet. We finished icing our lemon cakes and we've got our mulled wine and our beef and barley soup heating back up. We're going to serve that with a crusty bread so you can dip it in the soup. So hopefully these, with these three recipes you'll be able to make your Game of Thrones launch party a success. So if you're looking for other Game of Thrones related recipes, you can always check out inatthecrossroads.com or pick up their awesome cookbook, which is what we used a lot of our recipes from today. There's a bunch of other great Game of Thrones themed things. They do both modern and uh, time period related recipes with different mixtures and different ways of cooking things. And they also just put out a new Dornish themed cookbook. So check it out.